Hello, welcome to your program, Community Now. Your most watched community report across the country. I'm Funke Adesoji, your host. On a special focus is holistically addressing the nation's humanitarian crisis, putting an end to the triggers and resettling displaced populations. But first, we bring you the news update.
Now, it goes beyond saying that the COVID-19 pandemic has had adverse effects on humanity, especially in the area of businesses and survival. It is indeed a trial time for Nigerians as they continue to grapple with economic hardship amidst the pandemic. In this report, Community Now tells the stories of a fashion designer, a cobbler, a dry cleaner and a ride hailing service driver. The coronavirus pandemic has no doubt caused untold hardship across the globe, even as individuals, organizations and business owners struggle to stay afloat. Here in Nigeria, the case is no different. Many were rendered jobless as businesses shut down, and those still standing struggle to stay afloat despite the economic hardship ravaging the country. This is no different for small business owners, entrepreneurs and artisans. Civil Bed News 24 crew caught up with some individuals from these groups. They tell their stories in this interview. I have not seen money to pay for trouble and even on my landlord have given me cookies notice to pack. And that's why you see that they have locked my shop now. But I'm coming here from house hang around because of my customer to see any some work collect from them to go and do it at home. That's why. Even though to hit at home self we had if we talk to our government to help us out of this situation that has happened in our country because to have money to get money now is not easy. If there is party then go bring clothes are they are they managed to sew clothes where we're small small but for now as coffee day I just they manage even say I they call our customer for phone say you know so clothes no so close. You go say ah, no party oh, no money oh. See my machine. Oh. Everybody they use new machine, but me na old machine. It day for my shop go oh. make na help me oh. If I see money, I feel buy new machine, whipping machine, sewing machine, fine fine one. I won't make it day for my shop oh. For the dry cleaner. Estimated bill from irregular power supply, drought in patronage, and finance are the major challenges. And for this hailing service driver. Robbed at gunpoint, his phone snatched and money withdrew from his account. It is a tale of woe. Since COVID-19 started, it has been difficult because most of the customers that we have, they are working class people that work in a bank and most of them stop because most of them work from home. And then it has been a big challenge for us. We are, are, even I have to reduce some staff that is working for me because the income that we are getting is not that like before. My plan and my goal is to expand this business more than this. But just because of the challenges and other things like Nepal issue too, I was not be able to do that. We have not been able to do our businesses accordingly. And I would say COVID has affected us in a negative way. Our businesses, even during this period, the hardship is too much. Um, they snatched my phone how many days ago? Three days ago. You know, I was in the traffic and you know they jogged my phone. I was receiving a call. So somebody just came up and jogged my phone. They withdraw the money in my account. It, it makes life so difficult, makes it unbearable, and you know, I can't take it uh, easy. It's not easy. It has not been easy at all. These individuals' challenges reflect the day-to-day -day issues and problems faced by the populace in the country with the current economic wars and COVID-19 pandemic hardship. But for many, governments should take the bull by the horn and activate measures that will reduce the hardship, making lives a tug of war for the citizens. Nigeria contributes 4.3% of the global figures of 79.5 million in terms of humanitarian crisis, making her one of the top 10 countries with the highest risk of a humanitarian disaster. That was in 2019. But nothing much has changed as the COVID-19 pandemic has made situations worse. For the Red Cross, Funding is a major challenge as many continue to suffer economic hardship resulting in the steady rise of the informal communities across major cities. The society implored Nigerians to sustain aid to the needy as a service to humanity is a collective responsibility. One of our major duties are as follows. We are into first aid training 
to both corporates and individuals as it may be. We are also involved in response into disaster management. Whenever there is call for emergency, we respond quickly. We also do intervention in the area of flooding. We meet the need of the vulnerables in our society, in our community. In the recent time, COVID-19 has been ravaging the whole world. Nigeria is not an exception, and Lagos State is not a, is also not an exception. It is on note that the society, Red Cross Lagos State Branch, took active part in distributing palliative. Part of our functions are we are into motherless and abandoned baby zone. We have a home in this Makoko that takes care of the needs of these people. In fact, is one of our major interventions. And we are also involved in the area whereby we, we, we collaborate with government because we have some services and we have some government agencies that we together we render services together like the lasema lasema is a major emergency rescue agency of the lagos state government and we are subject to their dictate when it comes to emergency so we work hand in hand and we are doing that very well we are collaborating and the lagos state government has been very supportive Without fund, we are limited. But the God of humanity has always been there for us, but he's going to use people to come to our aid. There are a lot of things. Our volunteers are out there. With part of our function also, we train and retrain them to meet up with the challenges of what is happening or the trend globally so we need to move with time we need to grow we don't have to just have a fixed mind that okay this is the way it is done in years past things have gone past that COVID-19 is showing us a lot of things and we have to move with that time so we have to train and retrain our volunteers to comply with the procedures and guidelines that is necessary or that are very very key to the current situation globally and the staff in the branch we need to train them too to, so that they can move also with the growth the new new normal is coming or we are even in it now the way we do things in time pass, we run things, we do disaster, they are changing and our staff must change. The motherless and abandoned baby zone must change. We have a school system, so we run a lot of functions. We have many things we do in Lagos State Branch. We have a community-based health center here, health clinic here. It's part of our function and it's part of things we do. So we are into many things. Red Cross is everywhere. Apart from our volunteers during disaster management or during emergency response management, our, our, our members are well trained in effort. What is effort? Emergency first aid training. Even this, the last election of local government in Lagos State, we had to bring our members, all our volunteers, we selected from all the divisions so that they can be trained. And this we did because time to time we have to train them so that they can meet up with the challenges. And that is part of what we do. Apart from training corporate bodies, we train our members on effort training. 
we are into psychosocial support too even after disaster what next you have to follow up you have to talk to them you have to cancel them that's psychosocial support and we do community engagement often and often we move to communities find out what is happening especially the the deprived ones in our society and you all know that women and children are the most vulnerable it is our responsibility it is our duty it is one of the functions of red cross to go out there to alleviate the suffering of the vulnerables in our community the economy is bad it's bad it's bad we have people in the affairs of government they are doing very well but we need more of their very well people are on the streets they are very hungry these are people that we normally we should take care of we don't have money in red cross but the little that we have we reach out to people that is why we are saying we need people's intervention government intervention government in law cannot do it people have we have a lot of rich people in nigeria we have in Lagos state let them come out and identify with humanitarian organization like nigeria red cross society let them bring the fund they can help us they can even supervise their fund but we'll manage it well for them that integrity is there for us to do that for them we'll help them we'll reach out to people that they don't know but when you give out this money or fund or food items to some people it will go to the wrong direction and that is what has been happening it's happening we are not political people we are non-religious religious we are non-partisan we are who we are and who are we we are humanitarian and the conscience of the job that we are doing is there for us to do it the right way it's been great when you see these children they see us as their parents they love us and we love them in return they see us 24 7 and they are very happy because they are well taken care of you will never know that they are not they are not even in need of anything because we make sure that all their needs are being made through some of our some of our generous donors some are anonymous donors they come here on regular basis they donate food to them they donate items they donate clothing even shoes so they meet their needs and that is where the country is sad the economy is bad but we need more of intervention from outside so that these children can be what god has ordained them to be the academic is there some donors will come up and take a, ch a, a, a two children or take a child and say okay from primary i'm going to take him or her to university education some individual donors they come in like that they do they do that but there are still others or other needs that we want people to come and take care of their home there needs some renovation need refurbishment their furniture the beds a lot of things the roof the, some of the roof are leaking but economy is you know is playing a key role there our water source we need a powerful one we need it to be done as soon as possible it's an appeal it's an appeal because you ask about the children and when it comes to children you know we have passion for them we are not asking that for ourselves but for the children and we want them to come and renovate the, the roof that is already bad some are already very very bad that need some renovation and even the environment
still on the effects of the lockdown on survival and sustenance of persons and communities. The lockdown indeed created multiple challenges, especially for the indigents and small business owners. Community now has the story of two women plying their trade. Just as the state, businesses and individuals are to count their circumstantial losses, no thanks to the COVID lockdown. Some indulge in sober reflections, and yet if you are the never going to give up attitude. Bukola Fashokun had a survival instinct turned into profitable venture of cocktail mixing and other trappings along with it. Before the COVID, I was actually doing um, bottled Chapman. And, but during the COVID, you know, customers now, we can't get to events anymore, no social gathering and all that. So post COVID, the thing just went down like that. A friend of mine introduced me to like a normal vocational training, just a token. I was like, okay, I'll pay for the token. Let me just go and do something. And I picked interest in it, that's cocktail. And, and the cocktail class, they taught us you um, parfait. So I picked interest in the cocktail at first. So later on, I just said, oh, let me just try this parfait out and give my daughter. And I posted it. I was so shocked when people were like, how much I want to buy. Some customers will place order and they want to get it immediately. And that can be possible compared to if I'm in a shop by the road, you know, passersby will see and they want to buy what I'm selling. But being at home, I can't have, um, I can't make orders expecting people to call me every day to come and buy. Do you understand? So it's actually a little bit challenging. And at the same time, it's okay. And most times I work at night. That's why I do tell my customers, please make it 24 hours. Because another thing is I don't reserve my products. I make it fresh. I don't put preservatives in it. You know, there's this, there's this freedom if you're working for yourself. And um, you, you would have um, enough room to explore and do things. You have enough time to yourself. As a woman, I think during the COVID, during the lockdown, it actually opened us to a whole lot of things. The strength we have, the zeal, the power, the passion, how far we can go as a woman. Perspective School also caught up with Ajibola Salako, a fashion designer who hit the end road, cut of the lockdown, and quickly made a detour into local food vending. She's also an employer of labor. At Ajibola's Amala Joint, it was a beehive of activities, but we managed to catch her attention. I love to cook. I do little, little catering on it. But when COVID happened, a lot of things happened. And um, so when I bounced back, I thought that, okay, how about the lost period when COVID happened? What were we going to do about it? And we saw the need that people couldn't do without food. We conceived the idea. We know what we wanted. We know what the people want. You know, we want them to have that local feel, the booker, and still we didn't want it to be like the 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 fast food setting whereby they think that okay, mm, this place we want that local feel, but yet a clean environment where people can still come in and you know they they feel at home. I've been a fashion designer all my life for like 15 years. That's what I've been doing for 15 years. So this is new to me, and I'm like. I haven't been doing this all my life. Like, really, this is how it is because I'm enjoying it. Although it has its own ups and downs, but I tell you that it's really... I wish I have been doing this before now. After a while, you know, after we started, um, we balanced that. We balanced. We saw what was, you know, what we needed to be done. And we realized that this business, there's no business that does not need capital. I tell you, the more money you pump into it, the, the easier it is for the business. So... I can tell you that now it's paying off. When we started, we we're not seeing money. We didn't even know what we we're doing. Oh no! When we see our income, our expenses, everything is gone. So all this idea came during COVID because we're just idle at home doing nothing. It's a period for everyone to rediscover themselves. It's a period for you to take a break. You think, what can I do again? What can I do more? And that's what gave birth to this. Maybe if I had not had that um, recession from my, from from the fashion, you know taking a break to look back at like, what else can I do. I realized that okay, I wasn't earning enough. Nobody was sewing, there was no party, there was no outing, no office, we were just at home. And nobody was thinking of any clothes. About, or, or instead of, everybody was thinking of safety. Uh, pre and post COVID has really made women, you know, rediscover themselves, if you say that. It has made me rediscover myself. 
Whichever way it is viewed, the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown was either a blessing or a curse, depending on which side of the flip coin you're on. It's a wrap on Community Now. Thanks for watching. You can be part of this broadcast by sending us information about things around you. If possible, send pictures and short video clips. Remember, life is what you make of it. I'm Funke Adesoji. Bye for now.